Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome back. Today is day two of our eighth grade lesson. I'm Miss Garen. We met yesterday on our first day's lesson. Let me go ahead and present my screen. I hope you're getting, um, you are ready to learn. So today we are going to review um, determining meanings of words. And we are going to learn or review theme. But before we, oops, I'm sorry. Before we start in our lesson, let's go ahead and do our riddle of the day. A man was walking in the rain in the middle of nowhere without a coat or an umbrella. He got soaked, but not a single hair on his head was wet. How can this be? Take a minute or take a few seconds and see if you can figure this riddle out. Okay, so I've given you several, uh, about 30 seconds to think this through. How is it possible for a man to walk in the rain without a coat or an umbrella and not get his hair wet? Well, it's possible if the man is bald and has no hair, like my husband. No, anyway, so that's our riddle of the day that you have no hair then your the hair on your head cannot get soaked. Okay. I know the riddle's probably a little corny, but I thought it was funny. So let's review one more time, like we did yesterday, the objectives for the week. Go ahead and read them to yourself. Just a reminder that I shaded the verbs in orange and I underlined the nouns so that you can take a second to see the action that we are doing. We are using, determining, di differentiating, and explaining. That's what we're doing as far as our actions. And then our nouns are the things that we need to look for and we are focusing on connotation and multiple meanings of words and the development of theme. Our learning target today is, today I'll be able to explain how an author develops a theme, theme in a written text, and I will review connotations and denotations. So let's take a minute and we've got one more word to add to our vocabulary list from yesterday. So today's word is theme. And I know that this is a word that you know and have seen before. So this might be a review for you. But if you want to take a minute and write it down, please do so. So theme is the lesson or the message the author wants the reader to learn. So it's the lesson or message the author wants the reader to learn. When I used to teach high school, a lot of times kids would think that theme is the same as plot. And that is not so. Plot is the action or the events in the story as they take place. Theme is an overall lesson or message that the author wants you to, to learn. And 
a story can have multiple or many themes in that one story. Let's review um, really quickly. See if you can recall what does connotation mean and what does denotation mean? Those were our two words that we learned yesterday. Take a minute if you want to write the definition for theme down, you may. And if you want to recall or say out loud our definitions from yesterday, connotation and denotation, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, let's review. So yesterday we learned connotation and denotation and we went over denotation, which is the dictionary definition of a word and connotation is when you have a feeling or impression that people associate with a word. And we learned that Connotation can have a positive, negative, or neutral effect on a word. And we practiced with these eight sentences. What we're going to do today is we're going to do some independent practice. I'm going to do number one with you, and then I'm going to pause, and you're going to do two, three, four, and five by yourself. So let's look at number one. And let's look at the direct, well, excuse me, let's look at the directions first. And it says for numbers one through three, which word has the same denotation as the underlined word, but has a more negative connotation? Let's read that again, because that sounds a little bit confusing. For numbers one through three, which word has the same denotation as the underlined word, but has a more negative connotation. Okay, so we're looking for a word that means the same thing as unpredictable in number one, but is a more negative word than unpredictable. And when you're unpredictable, it means that you're not predictable, which means that we never know what you're going to do. If you're not predictable, it means that you could do one thing um, and then five minutes later, you might do something else. So let's look at these words. Which one of these words would be the best fit for the answer? Changeable. Now changeable, does that have a negative connotation? Not really. Changeable has more of a neutral or even positive connotation. So that one is out. B is volatile. Now volatile is when not only do you change your mind, but you do it almost in an angry or an aggressive way. So that is a very negative word. And that could be the answer. C is whimsical. Whimsical is when you change your mind, but you do it in a very creative or fancy way. So that's not a negative word. And variable, variable doesn't really work in this, it's not really the right word to work in this answer. So the best answer for number one is B. Now, which is, which is volatile, like I said, which has the most negative connotation. So remember for que uh, questions two through three, you're finding a word that means the same definition word, but is more negative than the word that they provided. Now the direction, well, let's go ahead. I'm gonna give you um, a couple of minutes. What I want you to do is just go ahead and pause your screen and take as much time as you need, and then unpause to hear the answers. Okay, so we're back, and let's review and, uh, questions two and three. So number two, the actors felt that the director's comments were sometimes clever, 
And when you're clever, you're smart. But we are looking for a word that is a little bit more negative than clever. The word perceptive, perceptive is a very positive word. That's actually a compliment. If somebody tells you that you're perceptive, it means that you really can see things clearly and well, and it's another word for clever. So that does not have a negative connotation. It has a positive connotation. So we cross it out. Same with insightful. Insightful is also an, a compliment and is a positive um, connotation of a word. Similar answer with keen. Keen is probably more neutral and also is not necessarily the best fit for this sentence. So by process of elimination, our best answer is D, which is shrewd. And if somebody calls you shrewd, it means that you are smart or clever, but it has a negative connotation or meaning because sometimes you're a little bit sneaky or aggressive when you are shrewd. So that is why that would be the answer for number two. Number three, the director's feedback excited the actors. So we need a negative word for uh, to replace excited. Um, agitated. Now, if you're agitated, you are excited, but in a, in a very upset, worried way. So that is definitely a negative word. We'll circle it and see if it's our best answer. B, the director's feedback inspired the actors. Inspired is a positive word. If somebody inspires you, they lift you up. So that would not be the, a negative one. It's not negative, it's positive, so we cross that one out. Same with invigorated. If somebody invigorates you, they like stir you up, but it's in a positive way which also in turn leads to de-energized. If somebody gives you a lot of energy, energizes you, that also has a positive meaning or connotation. So we have three positive words for excited and we have one negative. So the best answer is A, agitated. Now, question four and five are a little bit different. The directions are different. And this is why it's so important to always read directions because it's changed. It says for numbers four and five, which word has the same denotation as the underlined word, but it has a more positive connotation? Okay, so now we're taking the word and doing the opposite of what we just what we just did. The definition doesn't change. The denotation does not change. But we're not we're looking for replacing the word with a more positive word. The doc, I'm sorry, the director's great arrogance made it difficult for him to compromise in his way of doing things. If you don't want to compromise, it makes you difficult. And arrogance is when you're conceited and full of yourself and you think that you are the only person that has the best answer. So we want a word that is more positive for arrogance. Let's look at our options and see which one you think is best. Okay, so conceited is very negative. Smugness, if you're smug, it's also when you think a lot of yourself and it's not a negative word. Confidence, now if you're confident, you know that that is a very positive word. That so if somebody calls you that you're full of confidence or that you have com you're confident, that's a positive word. So that would be a better word for arrogance. So we'll circle that one. D, if somebody calls you haughty, haughtiness is the same as conceit and smugness. Haughtiness means that you think a lot of yourself and you're, you're snooty, you're uppity, okay? So that would not be a positive word. So the best answer is C, confidence. Now, number five, at the end of the rehearsal, rehearsals, the actors admitted that this director brought out the best in them. All right, so when you admit something, it means that you acknowledge something to be right. So we're looking for a more positive word for admitted. If we look at these words, which one do you think is the best answer?
So the best answer is A, declared. Because when you declare something, it means that you feel strongly about it and you know it to be true. Gossiping, we know that gossiping has a negative meaning or connotation to it, negative feeling if somebody's talking about you behind your back. So we know that's negative. We cross that out. Confessed. Confess also has a negative feeling because usually when you're confessing to something, it's because you've done something wrong. So that one would we would cross out. Inventing. Venting is a very negative word. That's when you get angry and you're like you are talking to your best friend and you are just trying to get everything out and you are just going on and on and on. That's venting. OK, talking really aggressively with somebody about your feel about your problems. So that also is a negative word. So the best answer is, again, a declared. OK, so that was our review for connotation. And later on in the week, we are going to. Um, in the text, we are going to identify words and determine if they have negative, neutral, or positive connotation. And then I also want you to consider why. Why would an author or a writer, why would they use words with a positive versus negative connotation? What, what does that do to the story? How does it change the story when you use different types of words? So that's something that I want you to think about. Now we're going to go into another activity about theme. Okay, so we're going to practice with theme. And we might not get as far into the lesson as I would like. And that's okay because we will pick up with it tomorrow. So we've got our lesson determining theme. I want you to take a minute and look at this paragraph while I read it aloud to you. You may read fiction for pleasure or entertainment, but did you know that most stories also provide lessons about life? These lessons are expressed through the themes or messages at the heart of what the author writes. Even your childhood stories have themes. For example, the story Pinocchio may have taught you the important lesson about honesty. To identify a theme, connect ideas conveyed to identify a theme, connect ideas conveyed through the story's setting, plot, and characters. Now, I know last week with Miss Richardson, who is my partner, that you learned about setting, plot, and characters. And if you did not get a chance to listen to last week's lesson and you need a review on what how pl setting, plot, and characters um, connect in a story or are conveyed in a story, go back to Miss Richardson's lessons from week one. But I'm going to assume that you know how, what the definition and how to identify setting plot and characters, how you can do that in a story. I want you to look at this picture. This is a very impactful picture right here. And I want you to think about the message that is trying is trying to be addressed in this picture. So take a second and look at it. And there's a caption underneath the picture that says a blind runner and his guide approach the finish line during a Paralympic event in Malaysia. So it says at the bottom, suppose the people in the picture are characters in a story. Consider what they are doing. Circle any details in the picture and caption that suggest a message or a life lesson. There are several messages in this one picture. There are several themes that you can see or that you could find just based on one picture. So look at this chart that they've provided. I'm not gonna read it to you. You can read it to yourself. And what it does is it gives you details about the character, details about the setting, details about what the, what the characters are doing, and then the theme.
if you look at the theme that they've provided, it they say no matter what obstacles they face, people can ac accomplish amazing things through teamwork. So that's one thing that if you work with someone else and you do it together, that the end result will be better. That's just one theme. Another theme is to always help others, especially others in need. So there are several different themes that you could think about just in one picture, like they've said, okay? So, and if you look here, there's something here at the bottom, whether you read for pleasure, entertainment, or school assignment, you can learn valuable lessons from stories, thinking carefully about a story's character, setting, and plot, and how they work together will help you figure out or infer the story's theme. Tomorrow, as a practice at the beginning of our lesson, I'm going to provide a picture where you will have to look at that picture and see if you can determine the theme of the picture. So we will practice that more tomorrow. To end out our lesson, we are gonna come down and we are going to do the modeled activity right here, okay? So here's the story. I'm not going to read it to you. I want you to read this one on your own. So pause the video and go ahead and read the story. The sh I'm sorry, the short paragraph, short, several little parts of a story. Okay, so we've got a story about Holden and Pops. Basically, they tell us who the characters are in the title of the story, all right? If you see down below, there is a chart to kind of fig fill out, to figure out how we can determine how the details in the story can tell us about an overall theme, okay? So when you write this story, You've got Holden and Pops, and you've also got a conversation between Holden and his mom. And let me, let's look at this question together. It says, what do the details in this part of the story suggest about how people sometimes judge others? So this is a really good um, excerpt that talks about judging others or deciding for others without actually checking with them first. And Holden has decided that Pops is not interested in playing Holden's games because Pops is old and he might not understand technology. Holden has already made that decision without even asking Pops if he wants to play. And his mom tells him, and here's the message right here. The message is in the, what mom says to Holden. She says, you know, Pops might surprise you. Keep your options open. You might even ask them about a big, scary technology sometime. So coming down here is where you would think about what is Holden's attitude towards, towards Pops? Is it positive or negative? Does he think that Pops can handle technology and for video games? Based on our story, no, Holden does not think that he can. But mom says you need to give him a try. So a theme would be to not judge, and this is a little quaint saying, but to not judge a book by its cover, which means just because someone is old does not mean that they don't know how to keep up with technology. So that would be one theme for that little part of the story that we just read, all right? So tomorrow we will pick up on the guided instruction, which is the next part, which is a continuation of the story of Pops. And we will do that tomorrow. Let's review quickly what we did. And we covered theme. And we haven't gotten to the second question yet, but this is something that you can consider for tomorrow's lesson. 
How does an author use theme in a story or a text? If an author is trying to teach the reader something, if they're trying to teach them a lesson, then that could be how an author uses theme by teaching that lesson. But I want you to think about some other ways that an author could use theme. And so we will talk about that more as we continue throughout this week. Tomorrow, we will continue learning about theme and how an author uses theme. And you will practice independently on identify, identifying and analyzing a theme of a passage. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We reviewed connotation and denotation one more time. We will see that one. We will see that again throughout the week. And then we learned or reviewed the concept of theme and how theme works in a story. I will see you tomorrow for our third session. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.